Regulations of the Audit and Compliance Committee of Oricoin Banks. Oricoin. Chapter 1. Preliminary. Article 1. Purpose and Legal Nature. The Audit and Compliance Committee, the committee of Oricoin Bank, is an internal body of the Board of Directors of a permanent, informative, and consultative nature with powers of information, advice, and proposal. The purpose of these regulations, the regulations, is to determine the powers and principles of action of the Commission as well as the basic rules of its organization and operation, and to promote the independence of the Commission in its operation. The members of the committee, as well as the other members of the Board of Directors, insofar as they are concerned, are obliged to know and comply with these regulations. In addition, the committee shall have the obligation to ensure compliance with these regulations and to adopt the appropriate measures to ensure that they are disseminated throughout the rest of the organization. Article 2. Interpretation 1. The present regulations complete and develop the regulatory regime applicable to the Commission as set forth in the legislation in force in the bylaws and in the regulations of the Board of Directors of Oricoin Bank. Consequently, these rules shall prevail in the event of contradiction with the present rules of procedure. 2. The regulation will be interpreted in accordance with the legal and internal regulations that are applicable. 3. The committee is responsible for resolving any doubts arising from the application and interpretation of these regulations in accordance with the general criteria for the interpretation of legal rules and subject, in all cases, to the ultimate criterion of the Board of Directors. Article 3. Modification 1. These regulations must be approved by resolution of the Board of Directors. 2. The modification of the regulations must be approved by resolution of the Board of Directors at the initiative of the Board itself or of the Committee, in the latter case at the proposal of its Director or of the majority of its members, in the event that the amendments are adopted at the initiative of the committee, the amendment of the regulations shall require for its validity the resolution adopted to that effect by the majority of the members of the committee, which must subsequently be submitted for final approval by the Board of Directors. Any amendments shall enter into force on the date of their approval by the Board of Directors. Article 4. Dissemination. The current version of the regulations will be made public and will be available on the Oricon Bank website. Chapter 2. Functions. Article 5. Competences. 1. In addition to those others that may be entrusted to it by the Board from time to time, the committee's main responsibilities are as follows. 1. To ensure the independence of the statutory auditors and to supervise their selection process and proposals for appointment, re-election or replacement. 2. To supervise the independence and effectiveness of the internal audit. 3. To supervise the processes for the preparation and presentation of the mandatory financial information. 4. Supervise the effectiveness of Oricoin Bank's internal control system and risk management systems. 5. Supervise compliance with the corporate social responsibility policy, internal codes of conduct, and applicable regulations on related party transactions with directors and significant shareholders, 
and 6. Advise or appoint banks, board of directors. 2. In the performance of its duties, the committee shall take into account the following basic principles of action. 1. Accountability. 2. Skepticism. 3. Constructive dialogue that promotes the free expression of its members. 4. Continuous dialogue with internal audit, the statutory auditor and management. And 5. Sufficient analytical capacity, use of experts. 3. The powers of the committee are those set forth in this chapter without prejudice to any other duties that may be attributed to it from time to time by law, the internal regulations of Oricoin Bank or the Board of Directors. Article 6. Functions relating to the audit of accounts. In relation to the statutory auditor, the committee shall exercise the following functions. 1. Define, periodically review and ensure compliance with a procedure or policy for selecting the auditor, specifying the criteria or parameters to be assessed in the light of the recommendations in force at any given time. 2. To submit to the Board of Directors for submission to the General Meeting of Shareholders the proposals for the selection, appointment, re-election and replacement of the auditors of Oricoin Bank and its group, taking responsibility for the selection process as well as the conditions of their engagement, and to regularly obtain information from the auditors on the audit plan and its execution, in addition to preserving their independence in the performance of their duties. In this function, the committee shall also guide and propose to the competent governing bodies the proposals for the selection, appointment, re-election, and replacement of the auditors of the other companies in the group. 3. Receive annually from the auditors a declaration of their independence in relation to the entity or entities directly or indirectly related to it, as well as detailed and individualized information on additional services of any kind rendered and the corresponding fees received by the aforementioned auditors or by the persons or entities related to them, in accordance with the provisions of the regulations governing the auditing of accounts. 4. To issue annually, prior to the issuance of the audit report, a report expressing an opinion on whether the independence of the auditors or audit firms is compromised. This report shall contain, in any case, a recent assessment of the provision of additional services rendered by the auditors, individually considered and as a whole, other than the statutory audit and in relation to the independence regime and the regulations governing the auditing of accounts. 5. Establish the appropriate relationships with the auditors to receive information on those matters that may threaten their independence and any other matters related to the auditing process and, where appropriate, the authorization of services other than those legally prohibited by the applicable regulations, as well as those other communications provided for in the legislation on auditing and in the technical auditing standards. 6. Establish sources of information within Oricoin Bank that provide relevant information on the independence of the statutory auditor from financial management, other management functions, internal audit, or other assurance functions, such as the compliance or risk unit, or externally, such as information provided by the statutory auditor himself. 7. To request from the auditor, when it deems it necessary, explanations regarding the internal quality control system that the auditor must have in place with respect to independence, as well as information on the internal rotation practices of the audit partner and its staff and their compliance with the provisions 
of the regulations governing the auditing of accounts. For these purposes, the committee may require that in the annual independence letter sent to it by the auditor, the latter include a statement in which it reports on compliance with these points. 8. Ensure that the auditor's remuneration for his work does not compromise his quality or independence and analyze the significant variations that may occur in his total remuneration. 9. To supervise compliance with the audit contract, ensuring that the opinion on the annual accounts and the main contents of the audit report are drafted clearly and accurately and to evaluate the results of each audit. 10. Annually evaluate the performance of the auditor and its contribution to the quality of the audit and the integrity of the financial information, including as parameters for such evaluation those established in the auditor selection policy. 11. Serve as a channel of communication between the board of directors and the auditors Evaluate the results of each audit and the management team's responses to their recommendations and mediate in cases of discrepancies between the auditors and the board of directors in relation to the principles and criteria applicable to the preparation of the financial statements. 12. Ensure that the statutory auditor holds at least one meeting a year with the full board of directors to report to it on the work performed and on the evolution of the accounting and risk situation of Oricoin Bank. 13. Ensure the auditor complies with current regulations on the provision of non-audit services, limits on the concentration of the auditor's business and, in general, and other regulations on auditor independence. To this end, the committee may review and approve additional policies and guidelines that develop the principles contained herein regarding the approval and or prohibition of the provision of certain non-audit services and, in general, in relation to legal regulations on auditing matters. In this regard, the committee is responsible for the prior approval of the provision of non-audit services assessing. 1. Their nature, the circumstances and context in which they occur, as well as their effects and whether such services may threaten the auditor's independence. 2. Whether the audit firm, based on its knowledge and experience, is the most appropriate to provide such services. 3. Their remuneration for non-audit services individually or as a whole in relation to audit services and the parameters used by the audit firm to determine its own remuneration policy, and for, if applicable, the establishment of an indicative limit on the fees to be received by the statutory auditor for non-audit services, taking into account the provisions of the law and the provisions of these regulations. The Commission will be empowered to establish that, in urgent cases, said approval may be advanced by delegation of its director, without prejudice to its subsequent information at the next meeting of the Commission. 14. In the event of the resignation of the account auditor, examine the circumstances that led to it, and supervise that Oricoin Bank communicates as a relevant fact to the competent authorities the change of auditor and, where appropriate, accompany it with a statement on the eventual existence of disagreements with the outgoing auditor and, if they existed, their content. 15. Review compliance with the prohibition subsequent to the completion of the audit work established by the audit law. Article 7. Functions related to internal audit. 1. Oricoin Bank will have an internal audit function, which, under the supervision of the Commission, will ensure the proper functioning of the internal information and control systems. 2. The head of the internal audit function shall submit his annual work plan 
to the Commission. It shall also report directly to the Commission on the impact of the implementation of the plan and shall submit to the Commission at the end of each financial year a regular report on the activities and reports carried out during the financial year together with the recommendations and action plans. 3. In relation to the internal audit function, the committee shall a. Ensure the independence and effectiveness of the internal audit function. b. Propose the selection, appointment, re-election, and removal of the person in charge of the internal audit service. c. Annually approve the internal audit work plan, ensuring that both the management and its staff have the human, financial, and technological resources necessary for its execution and that its activity is mainly focused on the relevant financial and non-financial risks of the Oricoin Bank. D. Propose to the Board of Directors the budget for the Internal Audit Service. E. Guide and supervise the internal audit activity of Oricoin Bank and its group, ensuring that its activity is focused on Oricoin Bank's main risks. F. Evaluate the functioning of the internal audit and the performance of its manager. The evaluation must include an assessment of the degree of compliance with the objectives and criteria established, as well as the opinion that the executive management of Oricoin Bank may have for the purpose of determining the annual variable remuneration of the person in charge, in the determination of which the committee must also participate. G. Receive periodic information on the activities carried out by the Internal Audit Department and, specifically, on the execution of the annual board plan, the incidents encountered and the recommendations to that effect. H. Oversee that management takes into account the findings and recommendations of the Internal Audit Department's reports. Article 8. Functions related to the economic financial reporting process. The Commission shall perform the following main functions. 1. Supervise the preparation and presentation process and the clarity and integrity of the economic financial and related non-financial information of Oricoin Bank and its group reviewing compliance with regulatory requirements, the adequate delimitation of the consolidation perimeter, and the correct application of accounting criteria and submitting recommendations or proposals to the Board of Directors aimed at safeguarding its integrity. This supervisory work of the committee shall be carried out on an ongoing basis and, additionally, on an ad hoc basis at the request of the Board of Directors. 2. With respect to the economic, financial, and non-financial information that Oricoin Bank must periodically and or compulsorily provide to the markets and their supervisory bodies to evaluate compliance with legal requirements and the correct applications of generally accepted accounting principles and to inform the Board of Directors of any significant change in accounting criteria and, in particular, of any significant adjustments identified by the Auditor or resulting from the reviews carried out by the Internal Audit. 3. Analyze the reasons why Oricoin Bank discloses certain alternative performance measures in its public information instead of the measures directly defined by accounting regulations, the extent to which they provide useful information to customers and their degree of compliance with best practices and international recommendations in this area. 4. To attend to, respond to, and take into account in a timely and appropriate manner the requests sent in the current or previous fiscal years to the authorities and or agencies it designates to regulate us, 
regarding financial information ensuring that the same time of incidents previously identified in such requests are not repeated in the financial statements. 5. Coordinate the reporting process of non-financial and diversity information in accordance with applicable regulations and international reference standards. In this regard, to verify that the periodic economic financial information is prepared using the same accounting criteria as the annual financial information and, to this end, to propose, if appropriate, to the Board of Directors the appropriateness of the auditor carrying out a limited review of the periodic information other than the annual information, either on a half-yearly or quarterly basis. 6. Establish a system of internal control of financial information that allows for the confidential and anonymous reporting of potentially significant irregularities, especially financial and accounting irregularities within Oricoin Bank. 7. Review that the financial information published on the corporate website is permanently updated, being able to delegate this function internally to Oricoin Bank, and that it coincides with that which has been formulated by the directors of Oricoin Bank and published where appropriate when it is obliged to do so on the website. Article 9. Functions related to internal control and risk management systems. The Commission will exercise the following main functions. 1. Periodically review the effectiveness of the internal control and risk management systems as a whole, covering both financial and non-financial risks, including tasks risks, receiving the relevant reports from those responsible, the internal audit, and any other person hired to the effect to identify, analyze, and adequately report on the main risks, as well as analyze, together with the account auditors, the significant weaknesses of the internal control system detected during the performance of the audit, all without affecting its independence. As a result of this review, the committee may submit recommendations or proposals to the Board of Directors. The committee shall periodically evaluate the need for an independent risk control and management area. Failing these, it shall ensure that Oricoin Bank has implemented alternative processes so that management, the committee itself, and the Board can know whether the risk control and management system has worked as foreseen in the policy approved by the board. 2. Supervise the risk control and management policy that affects the achievement of corporate objectives, including, in general, the supervision in the agenda of the committee's meetings so that all significant risks can be analyzed throughout the year. 3. Promote a culture in which risk is a factor taken into account in all decisions and at all levels of Oricoin Bank, periodically reassessing the list of risks and the tolerance level established for each of them, identifying and understanding emerging risks and existing warning mechanisms and their effectiveness. 4. Ensure that the risk control and management policies that the Board approves identify at least a. the various types of financial and non-financial risks, including operational, technological, legal, social, environmental, political and reputational risks faced by Oricoin Bank, including financial or economic risks contingent liabilities and other off-balance chip risks. b. Setting the level of risk that Oricoin Bank considers acceptable and obtaining reliable information on whether the most relevant risks are managed and maintained within the tolerance values set, studying these values and, if necessary, proposing their adjustment. c. 
The measures planned to mitigate the impact of the risk identified should they materialize. D. The information and internal control systems to be used to control and manage the aforementioned risks. 5. Ensure that the internal audit department or the alternative mechanisms implemented so that management, the committee itself and the board can participate in the definition of the risk strategy in the proper functioning and effectiveness of the control systems and in the mitigation of the risks detected. 6. Hold at least once a year a meeting with each of the group's business managers at which they explain the trends in their respective businesses and the risk associated with them. Article 10. Functions relating to certain obligations specific to listed cryptocurrencies. The Commission shall perform the following main functions. 1. Report to the Board of Directors prior to the Board adopting the corresponding decisions on the following matters. a. The creation or acquisition of cryptocurrencies and or fiat money as well as any other transactions or operations of a similar nature which, due to their complexity, could undermine the transparency of Oricoin Bank. b. Operations related to directors or significant partners or those represented on the board. For these, the Commission must collect and analyze all the necessary information and documentation, being able to request expert reports when it is deemed appropriate to pronounce on aspects such as the effects of the proposed transaction for the corporate interest or whether the transaction would be carried out in terms market. In particular, it will ensure that the information on the same as required by law is communicated to the cryptoactive market. 2. Supervise compliance with internal codes of conduct and, in particular, with the code of conduct regarding the crypto assets market. 3. Establish an internal mechanism that allows employees to report confidentially and, if deemed appropriate, anonymously, and potentially significant irregularities, especially financial and accounting irregularities they notice within Oricoin Bank. 4. In this sense, periodically receive information on the operation of said mechanism that includes, at least, the number of companies received, their origin type, the results of the investigations, and the proposals for action. Once the foregoing has been analyzed, the Commission, if it deems it necessary, will propose the appropriate actions to improve its operation and reduce the risk of irregularities in the future. 5. Approve a code of ethics and establish procedures to monitor that the principles of integrity and professional ethics are respected, as well as measures to identify and correct deviations from these values within the organization. Prepare and keep updated a statement of ethical values regarding the reliability of financial information and compliance with applicable regulations, which will be approved by the Board of Directors and communicated to all levels of the organization. 6. In the context of the matters within the competence of this committee and without prejudice to the general functions and powers that may attribute it to other committees to examine compliance with the internal code of conduct, the code of ethics, the regulations of the Board of Directors, these regulations and, in general, the rules of governance of Oricoin Bank and to make the necessary proposals for their improvement, including the periodic evaluation of the corporate governance systems of Oricoin Bank, so that it fulfills its mission of promoting the corporate interest and takes into account, as appropriate, the legitimate interests of the remaining stakeholders. 7. To review the corporate social responsibility policy 
ensuring that it is oriented towards the creation of value and monitoring the corporate social responsibility strategy and practices and evaluating its degree of compliance. To review the corporate social responsibility report and propose to the board any changes it deems appropriate as a result of the periodic review of the approved policy and the evaluation of its degree of compliance. Supervise the communication and relationship strategy with partners and clients, including small and medium-sized partners and other stakeholders. 8. Report prior to its approval by the Board of Directors and the Annual Corporate Governance Report on matters within the competence of this committee. Article 11. Other functions. 1. Report prior to their authorization by the Board of Directors or the General Shareholders' meeting, as the case may be, the operations or transactions that may represent conflicts or interest. 1. With Oricoin Bank. 2. With directors of Oricoin Bank and its related parties. 3. With shareholders owning a significant shareholding or represented on the board of directors and their related parties. 4. With senior management and other executives and any other relevant transaction with respect thereto unless not required by law or by Oracle and Bank's internal regulations. 2. Approve the operations or transactions referred to in the preceding paragraph when, for reasons of urgency, the director of the board of directors so entrusts and the committee shall inform the board of directors as soon as possible. 3. Report prior to the adoption by the Board of Directors of the corresponding decision in relation to the possible authorization or dispensation granted to a director with respect to the duties of such directors. 4. To inform the Board of Directors on the basis of information received from the person in charge of tax matters of the tax policies applied by Oricoin Bank and in the case of transactions or matters to be submitted to the Board of Directors for approval of their tax consequences when they constitute a relevant risk factor. 5. To report to the Board of Directors prior to their approval on the structural or corporate modification operations that Oricoin Bank intends to carry out. The report shall deal with their economic conditions, accounting impact, and, if applicable, the exchange ratio. Chapter 3. Composition and Duties of the Committee Members Article 12. Composition 1. The committee shall be formed by a minimum of three and a maximum of five board members appointed by the Board of Directors itself from among its external board members. In any case, the majority of its members must be independent directors. 2. The Board of Directors, at its own initiative or at the proposal of the committee, shall determine the number of members subject to a report from the Appointments and Remuneration Committee. Article 13. Criteria and requirements for the appointment of the members of the committee. 1. The members of the committee, and in particular its director, shall be appointed by the board of directors, taking into account their knowledge and experience in accounting, auditing, or risk management matters, their knowledge and experience in financial matters and in internal control and business management as well as their knowledge, skills, and experience in relation to the other duties of the committee shall also be taken into account. In particular, in order to be considered as having knowledge and experience in accounting, auditing, or both, the member of the committee must have a. Knowledge of accounting standards, auditing standards, or both. b 
ability to assess and interpret the application of accounting standards. C. Experience in preparing, auditing, analyzing, or evaluating financial statements with a certain level of complexity, similar to that of Oricoin back itself, or experience in supervising one or more persons involved in such tasks. And D. An understanding of the internal control mechanism related to the financial reporting process. 2. For these purposes, knowledge and professional experience accumulated in the performance of functions directly associated with such matters as well as knowledge and experience resulting from the performance of management and executive functions and responsibilities that, among others, significantly affect the aforementioned matters will be positively valued. 3. Diversity in its composition shall be sought, particularly in terms of gender, professional experience, skills, sectoral knowledge, and geographical origin. Article 14. Appointment and Term of Office 1. The members of the committee will be appointed and removed by the Board of Directors. 2. The members of the commission will be appointed for a maximum period of three years, and may be re-elected one or more times for periods of the same duration. 3. The members of the committee who are re-elected as directors of Oricoin Bank shall continue to serve on the committee, unless otherwise agreed by the board of directors. 4. The members of the committee, and in particular its director, shall receive sufficient remuneration in accordance with the responsibilities assumed, The remuneration of the director may differ from that of the other members of the committee. Such remuneration shall in no case compromise the independence and objectivity of the members of the commission. Article 15. Termination of office. The members of the committee shall cease to hold office in addition to the decision of the board. 1 when the term for which they were appointed has elapsed without being re-elected. 2. When they cease to be members of the Board of Directors. 3. When, without losing their status as members of the Board of Directors, they lose their status of external directors of Oricoin Bank. 4. When independent directors lose their status as such, If this brings the number of independent directors on the committee below the required majority. 5. In all those cases where so provided by law, the bylaws, the regulations of the Board of Directors, and other applicable regulations. 6. By agreement of the Board of Directors. Article 16. Director of the Commission. 1. The Commission shall appoint a director from among its members who most have sufficient capacity and availability to provide the Commission with a greater dedication than the rest of the members. 2. The director of the committee shall necessarily be appointed from among the independent directors who are members of the committee, taking into account their knowledge and experience in accounting auditing, or risk management matters. 3. In the event of absence, the independent director with the longest service on the committee and, in his absence, by the oldest independent director who is a member of the committee shall replace the director. 4. The director shall be replaced every four years and may be re-elected after a period of one year has elapsed since his or her resignation without prejudice to his or her continuity as a member of the Commission. 5. Without prejudice to the provisions of the regulations of the Board and these regulations, the functions of the Director shall be as follows. a. Planning Commission meetings. b. Ensure that the members of the Commission participate freely in the deliberations without being affected by internal or third-party pressures. c. 
establish an effective and regular communication channel with its annual interlocutors, mainly among others, one with Orico and Bank's management and, in particular, general and financial management, two, with the head of internal audit, and three, with the lead auditor responsible for auditing the accounts and involve other members of the committee in such communications. D. Channel and provide, through the secretary, the necessary information and documentation to the rest of the members of the committee, with sufficient time for them to analyze it prior to their meetings. E. Report to the board of directors on each meeting held with sufficient detail to enable the board to fulfill its responsibilities. F. Act, as the case may be, as spokesperson of the Commission at the general meetings of members. Article 17. Secretary of the Commission. 1. The Committee shall appoint a Secretary and may appoint a Vice Secretary, both of whom may not be members of the Committee. If no such designations are made, those of the Board of Directors shall act as Secretaries. 2. Without prejudice to the provisions of the regulations of the Board and these regulations, the duties of the Secretary and the Vice Secretary shall be as follows. a. Planning meetings, agendas, compiling, and distributing information among the members of the Commission. b. Draw up and keep the documentation of the committee reflecting in the minute books the development of its meetings, attesting to the resolutions adopted and ensuring the legality of the committee's actions. c. Channel and coordinate in accordance with the instructions of the director of the committee, its relations with the rest of the bodies or departments of the group or with third parties. D. Address the Commission's resource needs. Chapter 4. Duties and Powers of the Commission Article 18. Duties of the Members of the Commission 1. The members of the Committee shall act with independence of judgment with respect to the rest of the members of the organization and shall maintain an attitude of skepticism so as to properly question the data, the evaluation processes, and the previous conclusions reached by the executives, managers, and internal and account auditors of Oricoin Bank, thus performing their work with the utmost diligence and professional competence. In this regard, attendance at formal meetings of the Commission shall be preceded by sufficient dedication on the part of its members to analyze and evaluate the information received. 2. Likewise, the members of the Committee shall be subject, as such, to all the duties of directors set forth in the regulations of the Board of Directors, in the bylaws and in legal regulations insofar as they are applicable to the functions performed by the Committee. Article 19. Powers of the Members of the Committee, Appeals, Advice and Right to Information 1. Orico and Bank shall provide the Committee with sufficient resources to enable it to perform its duties and to have free access to any information necessary for the performance of its functions. The Commission's resource requirements shall be channeled through the Secretary or Deputy Secretary of the Board of Directors. 2. The Secretary or Vice Secretary of the Committee shall channel the necessary information and documentation to the rest of the members with sufficient time for them to analyze it prior to their meetings. The Secretary and or Vice Secretary shall have the necessary assistance to plan meetings, draft documents and minutes of the meetings, compile and distribute the information. The members of the management team or staff of Oricoin Bank shall be obliged to attend the meetings of the committee and to provide their collaboration and access to the information at their disposal when requested by the committee. 
The committee may also require the attendance at its meetings of the auditors of Oricoin Bank, but may not attend the decision-making part of the meetings. 3. When it deems necessary for the proper performance of its functions, the Commission may, at the expense of Oricoin Bank, seek the advice of external experts who shall address their reports directly to the Director of the Commission. 4. To this end, they shall inform the Secretary or Vice Secretary of the Board of Directors who shall be responsible for contracting the corresponding services. In such cases, their committee shall ensure that any possible conflicts of interest do not prejudice the independence of the external advice received. Chapter 5. Functioning of the Commission Article 20. Meetings of the Commission 1. The committee shall meet at least quarterly to review the periodic financial information to be submitted to the supervisory authorities as well as the information to be approved by the Board of Directors and included in its annual or interim public documentation. 2. These meetings shall be attended by the Internal Audit Department and when it issues a review report by the statutory auditor. At least part of these meetings with Oricoin Bank's internal audit management and the statutory auditor shall take place without the presence of Oricoin Bank's management team, so that specific issues arising from the reviews carried out can be discussed exclusively with them. 3. Likewise, the committee shall meet when convened by its director, either on his own initiative or at the request of the director of the board of directors or of two members of the committee itself. The director of the committee may call extraordinary meetings of the committee when, in his opinion, circumstances so warrant. 4. If deemed appropriate, the committee director may invite third parties, executive directors, managers, employees, experts, etc. to committee meetings, but only to deal with those specific agenda items for which they are summoned. 5. If no member of the committee objects, the committee may also adopt resolutions in writing and without a meeting in accordance with the provisions of the applicable legal regulations and the board regulations, in which case the vote may be cast in writing or by email, provided that the identity of the director casting the vote is assured. Article 21. Notice of Call 1. Notice of meetings shall be sent by letter, email, or any other means that provides proof of receipt. 2. The notice shall be issued at least five days in advance, unless there are reasons of urgency, and it is called by the director 48 hours in advance and shall always include the agenda of the meeting, as well as sufficient and relevant information duly summarized and prepared for this purpose. The agenda shall clearly indicate those items on which the committee must adopt a decision or agreement. The secretary, as the person responsible for the efficient operation of the committee, shall ensure that the documentation that, where appropriate, must be provided by the board members is delivered sufficiently in advance. 3. Any member shall have the right to request the director to include certain matters in the notice of any meeting of the committee, without prejudice to the power of proposal that corresponds to each member. It shall not be necessary to convene a meeting of the committee if all its members present or represented unanimously agree to hold a meeting. Article 22. Conduct of meetings. 1. The Commission shall be validly constituted 
when majority of its members are present or represented at the meeting. 2. The Commission shall meet at the place indicated in the notice of meeting. 3. The Director shall direct the discussion and voting shall be by a show of hands. 4. In order to encourage the diversity of opinions that enrich the Commission's analysis and proposals, the Director shall ensure that its members participate freely in the deliberations without being affected by internal or third-party pressures, and shall encourage constructive dialogue among its members, promoting free expression and a critical attitude. 5. Except in those cases in which the law or the bylaws specifically establish other voting forums, the Commission shall adopt its regulations by a majority of the members present or represented at the meeting. In the event of a tie vote, the vote of the Director shall not be decisive. 6. When the decisions to be taken by the Committee directly affect one of its members or persons related to him or when, in general, said member incurs in a situation of conflict of interest, he shall absent himself from the meeting until the decision is adopted for which purpose he shall be deducted from the number of members of the committee for the purpose of calculating majorities. 7. Minutes shall be taken of the resolutions adopted at each meeting, which shall be reported to the full board. The minutes shall be signed and therefore approved at the end of the meeting or at the beginning of the following meeting by the Secretary of the Committee or the Vice Secretary acting as Secretary of the meeting and as proof of his approval its Director. Once approved, they shall be made available to all members of the Board of Directors. Article 23. Welcome Program and Training Program. 1. A welcome program for new members of the committee will be in place to ensure that all new members have a minimum homogeneous knowledge of Oricoin Bank and to facilitate their active participation from the very beginning. Such programs should cover at least the following matters. A. The role of the committee, its responsibilities and objectiveness. B. The functioning of other specialized committees that Oricoin Bank has set up. C. The expected time commitment for each of the members. D. An overview of the business and organizations model of Oricoin Bank and its group and its strategy, main activities, financial structure, most significant risks, both financial and non-financial, most important policies of Oricoin Bank, including its code of ethics, and E, reporting obligations that Oricoin Bank has. 2. Likewise, the committee shall have a periodic training plan for its members to ensure the updating of knowledge which may refer, among others, to new developments in accounting regulations, the specific regulatory framework of Oricoin Bank's activity, internal and external auditing, risk management, internal control, and technological developments relevant to Oricoin Bank. Article 24. Annual Work Plan 1. The Commission shall approve an annual work plan that includes at least the following activities. A. The establishment of specific objectives for each one of the Commission's functions. B. The establishment of an annual calendar of meetings. C. Systematic organization or information and meeting agendas. D. The establishment, when appropriate, of preparatory working meetings on specific topics to complement the formal meetings of the Commission. E. Planning regular communication channels with management, the internal auditor, and the statutory auditor. F. 
providing to the extent possible for the need for external experts to advise on any of the matters within the Commission's competence. G. The planning of the training deemed appropriate is indicated in the preceding article. 2. The Director of the Commission informing the Secretary of the Commission so that its members receive the documentation sufficiently in advance will plan the meetings. 3. In carrying out this planning, it should be borne in mind that the members of the committee have mainly supervisory and advisory responsibilities without having to intervene in the execution or management, which are the responsibility of the Oricoin Bank's management and executive bodies. Article 25. Evaluation and Annual Report on the Activities of the Commission. 1. As part of the annual evaluation of the Board, the Committee shall evaluate its performance autonomously in order to strengthen its operation and improve the planning of each fiscal year. For this purpose, it shall seek the opinion of the other Board members and, if deemed appropriate, shall be assisted by an external consultant. 2. Regardless of the procedure chosen, the Board of Directors shall be informed of the aspects evaluated and the result of the evaluation so that they may be taken into account in the Board's annual evaluation. 3. On an annual basis, the Committee shall submit to the Board of Directors for approval a report on its operation which shall be made public on the occasion of the call of the ordinary general meeting of shareholders. Said report shall include at least the following aspects. A. Commission regulation. B. Composition of the committee during the fiscal year, including the category and seniority of each of its members, and reference to the information on them on the entity's website as well as the significant skills in terms of knowledge and experience that each member brings. Explain the criteria used to determine and the reasons for determining depending on the specific circumstances of each entity, the composition of the committee in particular with regard to the appointment of members who are not independent directors. C. Functions and tasks performed in practice during the fiscal year by the committee. Changes therein during the fiscal year and reference to the regulations governing the committee. D. Meetings held during the year and number of attendees, including whether non-members of the committee were invited. E. Number of meetings held with the internal auditor and the statutory auditor. F. Significant activities carried out during the period, reporting those that have been carried out with the collaboration of external experts in relation with 1. Financial and non-financial information and associated internal control mechanisms. 2. Transactions with related parties, in the event that the Commission has this function. 3. The corporate social responsibility policy and how it has been implemented during the year, if the Board of Directors has attributed this function to the Committee. 4. Risk management and control. 5. Internal audit, if not present, reasons for its absence. 6. The statutory auditor. 7. Follow up on the Commission's own action plans. 8. Nature and extent of communications, if any, with regulators. G. Evaluation of the functioning and performance of the Commission as well as the methods used to assess its effectiveness. H. Information on the Committee's opinion on the Auditor's independence. I. Information on which practical guidelines on Audit Commissions are being followed, if any, which ones, and to what extent. J. Conclusions. K. 
K, date of formulation of the report by the committee and date of approval by the board of directors. Four, in the interest of greater transparency, the extent to which the Commission's annual evaluation has led to significant changes in its internal organization and procedures shall be publicly disclosed in the Commission's annual report. Chapter 6. Relationships Policy Article 26. Relations with the General Assembly of Members 1. In accordance with the provisions of these regulations, the Committee shall prepare an annual report to be made available to the General Meeting of Shareholders on matters arising in connection with those matters within its competence and, in particular, on the outcome of the audit, explaining how the audit has contributed to the integrity of the financial information and the role that the Committee has played in the process. 2. Likewise, the Commission must issue and make available to the General Assembly of Members a. Prior to the issuance of the audit report, the report expressing an, an opinion on the independence of the auditors, as referred to in Article 6.4 of these regulations, and b. The report on related party transactions as referred to in the applicable Good Governance Recommendations. Article 27. Relations with the Board of Directors. 1. The Audit Committee shall report on its activities and be accountable for its work at the first meeting of the Board of Directors following its meetings. 2. The Board of Directors shall deliberate on the proposals and reports submitted to it by the Committee. 3. In addition, within three months following the end of each financial year of Oricoin Bank, the Committee shall submit to the Board of Directors for approval a report on its activities. Article 28. Relations with the Statutory Auditor 1. Communication between the Committee and the Auditor must be fluid and continuous, be in accordance with the obligation established in the regulations governing the auditing of accounts and not undermine the auditor's independence or the efficiency with which the audit is carried out. 2. Communication with the statutory auditor should be provided for in a calendar of activities and an annual agenda of meetings, most of them without the presence of the entity's management including all matters that may influence the audit opinion and the independence of the statutory auditor. In this regard, the auditor shall appear before the committee at least twice a year, once during the preliminary stage of its work and again close to its completion, in order to report on its progress and present its results. 3. The committee and the statutory auditor shall communicate any relevant aspect detected in relation to the accounting, the internal control system, or the audit. In particular, the committee shall receive regular information from the statutory auditor on the audit plan and the results of its execution, shall follow up on the recommendations proposed by the statutory auditor and may request his collaboration when it deems necessary. 4. Pursuant to the provisions of Article 6.3 of these regulations, the Committee shall require from the Auditor an annual certification of independence of the firm as a whole and of the members participating in the process of auditing the annual accounts of the group, as well as information on additional services of any kind rendered by the auditors or by persons related to them in accordance with the provisions of the legislation on auditing of accounts. 5. The Committee shall also supervise the application of the Internal Quality Assurance 
and independent safeguarding procedures implemented by the auditor. Article 29. Relations with Internal Audit and Functions of the Internal Audit Department. 1. The Commission shall promote the establishment of a unit to assume the internal audit function, which shall ensure the proper functioning of the information and internal control systems and shall report functionally to the Director of the Commission. 2. The Committee shall propose to the Board of Directors for its approval the selection, appointment, reappointment or dismissal of the Director of the Internal Audit Function. 3. This unit shall submit its annual work plan to the Commission, report regularly and directly on any incidents arising during its implementation and submit an activity report at the end of each fiscal year. The Commission shall verify that the management takes into account the conclusions and recommendations of its reports. 4. The Committee shall also receive periodic reports from management on the functioning of the risk management and control systems in place and the conclusions reached, if any, in the tests performed on such systems by the internal audit function of Oricoin Bank, as well as on any significant internal control deficiencies that the auditor may have detected in the course of its audit work. Article 30. Regulations with Oricoin Bank Business Management. 1. At least annually, the committee will hold a meeting with the senior management of the business units at which they explain the business trends and associated risks. 2. The committee, through its director, may gather information and request the collaboration of any officer or employee of Oricoin Bank and its group. Therefore, the officers or employees shall be obliged to attend the meetings of the committee and to provide their collaboration and access to the information available to them when they are required to do so. The regulations shall enter into force on the date of their approval by the Board of Directors of Oricoin Bank.